No one's ever done this before. What's the worst that could happen? The only thing fast enough to decode the human brain is the human brain. Whatever it is you're really thinking goes through the wire. Please, God, don't let him die. What was it like? Better than sex. Ladies and gentlemen, we have just invented telepathy. First of all, uh, first, thank you for your time, uh, Khalil and Amber, and thank you for the interview. And I want to congratulate you on this really fun and uh, and and in any case, I want to say um, a, a movie that will spark a conversation that will obviously have people thinking about. I, I mean, I'm a fan of computer conspiracy theories, so that's why I'm going to that line with with the story. And I, I, I'll obviously, I, I know I have the, the protagonist in here, and I have the director and writer in here. I'll, I'll, I'll I'll do. I'll, 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 you know, I'll, I'll mention you whenever I wanna. I would wanna go for a question. So I wanna start with Khalil. I know uh, you wrote and, and directed the movie. Um, I, again, I'm a fan of conspiracy theories, and this is this thing is something that I when 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 I, when, I, when, I, when I, when we spoke about we would speak about something like this. Like, to me, this is all something so real, and and. And I want to ask you, how I mean, when you were, were asking, when you, you, were, you were writing this, the, the story, you know, what, 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 what were you thinking? What were your, your inspirations that, you know, drove you to write, to write this, the story about, you know, brain, my brain manipulation and the whole, the whole this whole situation? Uh, yeah, I mean, the initial inspiration was kind of this, what if, what if, uh, someone invented telepathy, you know, what if we could have this superpower, but uh, based in the real world and on real science and uh, thing, you know, technology that is theoretically possible uh, mm -hmm. today and is starting to be developed now since mm -hmm. films come out. It's kind of amazing. Some of this stuff's really happening. Um, but uh, yeah, as far as the conspiracy theories and stuff, the government side and like, you know, everyone watching everything we're doing online, both the government and corporations, you know, like as I was doing research, I found, I mean, we sort of take it for granted, you know, that the government's listening to and, you know, uh, surveilling everything we're doing, you know, on the internet. Uh, but it's also kind of scary that corporations mm -hmm. are too, you know, uh, data mining and selling our data and just uh, tracking everything we do and, uh, even like doing experiments on us, you know, that's one aspect of the movie, you know, they're like uh, the government's doing exper experiments on test subjects, trying to control their thoughts. And uh, I found like the social media companies will do the same thing, you know, even without us being aware, you know, uh, like Facebook, I think while I was writing script, it had come out, they did this big experiment of showing some users all positive posts and other users all negative posts and uh seeing which one would cause them to engage with their uh platform more you know and if you were a user you had no idea this stuff was going on you know it was just someone's kind of manipulating your emotions uh so yeah this stuff happens for sure it's very real and uh worth being aware of uh even exploring it through like a fun sci-fi thriller yeah of course i mean that that, that i and I, I i i knew when you're playing it safe but to me to me this is so real i know obviously this is a movie and we're being artistic about everything but but there, to me to me everything that you know even i mean i i think when i when i, when I finished watching the movie i was like this to me is just like inception we're just playing with, their, with your minds and we're you know we're, we're playing tricks with your mind and we we're, we're, we're trying to control your mind in, in some way or another and i was like to me, this is so real because it, 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 it's not not nearly right, but to me, it's like they're they're controlling us in so many ways that it's just a very artistic expression of how, you know, you know, the government and everything everything is just controlling uh, controlling what we do or, or what we see or, or or with social media and everything. So I think that's one of the ones the one of the for the first things that will be, will catch people's eyes, like oh wow, this is. This is something that can happen, or or they can do they can do it for tor to torture people or stuff. So that's just scary. The whole different thoughts that they can do with it. Uh, I want to jump to Amber. Um, you know, once you saw you read the script, you understood what you know what the whole story was about. What was your first reaction? You know, thinking of you know, hey, this may be real or not. You know, what was your first reaction? 
oh, well, first of all, when I read the script, I was excited um, because uh, it's not every day that you get a script that is such a cool sci-fi story, but also at the same time, is it fiction? Is it nonfiction? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> it's under the guise of that, but exactly. like, I, yeah, I mean, I fell right into the story as soon as I started reading it because I too am always thinking about like, uh, you know, I, yeah, like I feel like I'm always being watched, especially now, mm -hmm. right? Um, and even back then it was just like little sprinkles in there, people know, but um, so to read the story and to be able to like play a, a part in this story, it felt really great because it felt not, it felt like a true story mm. <laughs> to me. So that's exciting, yeah. I, I, I got a little, the, the other vibe that I got was from the Evolution Man. I, I'm, and, I'm, and I'm thinking about the, the right? I, I, I know, I, I know. I'm, I'm not wrong, right? I got that from the Malaysian man, and I, I it just brought me back to that scene with with uh, with you know uh, Super Stallone and, and Sandra Bullock, and they're wearing the 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 their helmets and they're going into this this world. I, I want to remember how, how how did you manage those scenes where you were just in you know connected and you were in this humanity world, you know, doing everything that they were doing. Well, you know, uh, filming those scenes, um, it was fun only because, you know, you have the comfort, uh, we have a comfortable room, like you trust your director, you trust your actors. Um, so it's not so hard to like suspend your um, belief that you're in that area just because of the comfort that you that you live in. But I'm so glad that you mentioned Demolition Man because that's what I think of, too, <laughs> which I love that scene. That movie's great. I should, yeah. I think we should all revisit that movie very soon if you haven't seen it in a while. But yeah, you're right. That is what it felt like. It felt good. Yeah, I, 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 it brought me back. I was like, I was watching all the different scenes that with, you know, with the whole interaction with the machine, you know, I was like, this is, again, technology has come so so far with VR, with everything. I was like, I, this is real. I mean, this is just, this just, you know, obviously it's an artistic expression, the movie, but it, to me, so it's, it's just scary, it's scary real, you know, what, 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 what's going on in the world with everything that's going on with technology and what, what, what social media is trying to do. Uh, I want to come back to Khalil. Um, you know what maybe was of, of, of everything you know all different different you know all different subjects that you're trying to touch with with the reality of it all with the government being back everything being you know behind everything all what was maybe one of the things that you felt was the most difficult to the subject talk that you you felt like i, I don't want to touch any you know any fibers or anything. i want to i don't want anyone, anyone to feel uncomfortable what what was maybe a, a specific subject of the film that you felt it was more difficult to touch. Um, I mean, in some ways, the whole thing's uncomfortable. Someone plugging into your brain, you know, and uh, yeah. experiencing uh, even like those fleeting thoughts, you know, yeah. something that pops into your head just for a second uh, becomes very real if someone else mm -hmm. is plugged into it. And so that idea actually kind of really excited me, but it's also uncomfortable at the same time, right? Like. Uh, you know, the main character, David, has a relationship with his wife and, uh, you know, Jordan, the character Amber plays, you know, kind of comes into this uh, uh, relationship and there's not quite a love triangle, but something that is driving a wedge, you know, where, okay, she's a very attractive woman and suddenly you mm -hmm. have like for a second a thought. Um, but if your wife's plugged into your brain, she experiences that as real, you know, mm -hmm. and suddenly even just thinking about infidelity is the same as, you know, actually cheating on your husband or wife. And uh, it's definitely uncomfortable, but uh, it's worth thinking about, you know, mm -hmm. and what are the thoughts we're cultivating? You know, how does that manifest itself into our reality? You know, and I think that's kind of important, even on a spiritual level. It's not mm -hmm. just like, oh, okay, we need to always do the right thing, you know, that those, our actions need to come from a good place. And then it means we need to be thinking the right thing or something and how do you practice you know uh uh thinking the right way to like I don't know live a good life I guess uh and to explore that you have to get into some uncomfortable stuff I guess thoughts you wouldn't want other people to know about necessarily 
maybe two more questions, and, and I want I want this one to be like open one. Both of you can answer them. Um, maybe to walk us through a day. I mean, this movie obviously is a, it's a, it's a serious subject, but it would have been, I, I'm pretty sure it was a lot of fun uh, in set with everything that's going on. And maybe walk us through something, you know, that stands out that, that you know, you, you guys, you know, about that, that, you know, feel that it's funny and that it should be, you know, out there. So maybe Amber, first, can you tell us something that stood out where, while on set, while filming the, the project? Um, well, to be honest with you, we, so Khalil and his team uh, built the lab um, mm -hmm. and, you know, there was a lot of uh, like set, um, for, like just a lot of stuff. What do you call that, Khalil? Like props and- uh, you know, Yeah, technology and all, like this all the stuff. All the technology, yeah, yeah like, yeah. Um, in this one room. And so it was, you know, a lot of people uh, behind the scenes, like either tinkering or playing with these things or figuring out how to put them up. And, you know, we had our little actors section upstairs away, but I couldn't help but like come down and sit on the steps and like Just watch. watch. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's like where all the magic really happens. Yeah, it is yeah. where all that magic happens yeah. is all these brains coming together and figuring out how to make this place look and feel real. So by the time that we stepped in to do, um, have our conversations in our, in our scenes, it was like you were just transported immediately. I mean, Yes, I watched them do this. So it's like, you know, it's all the veil has been dropped. But like, I, it just felt so good to walk into a room that was, it was this is, this is my comfort zone. Yeah. Um, I love that. And that was, I don't know how many days we had on in the lab. Um, yeah, and the garage said the garage. garage. Yeah, that's yeah. Alec and the production design team did an awesome job with that. Yeah, we really wanted the garage like lab to feel like the inside mm -hmm. of a brain. Mm -hmm. So there were wires and stuff everywhere. Like the production design kind of echoed the neurons in your uh, in your head. Uh, yeah, that was kind of motif we had throughout the whole film. You definitely had to watch where you stepped because you could trip over something, but it was totally safe. <laughs> Because there's just so many things put in. I mean, I've never seen like a design that way. And, you know, even looking, I'm, you know, maybe expanding upon this, but uh, Kula had a Bible like this that you can't even really tell, but it's so thick of like the color, the design, the wardrobe, it was all planned out. And then when you saw it in the room, you're like, oh, that's why there were a thousand pages. <laughs> that he had prepped into the thing. It was so magical. I loved it. Yeah, I, I gotta, you know, I, I, I don't even want to expand on something, Khalil, but I want to, you know, I think that the, pro, the you know, the set design was really good and, and, it, and, it, and it brought, it's what brought it back to me. It, it just, it just complemented the whole story and, and the way that was built. So I, I got a few of your props. And you want to add something else, uh, Khalil, to the, to the... Yeah, I remember one of the, yeah, one of the funniest days was, uh, uh later on in the movie uh when david and ryan get kind of abducted by the government and matthews this like mm -hmm. government agent you know is uh they have this banter going back and forth where he's trying to you know transition them from being kidnapped to working for him and whatever and uh is uh he gets pissed at one point and uh fires his gun and then they still, the boys are still acting like, I don't know, stupid teenagers or something. And, uh, and he takes a bullet out of like the chair that he shot it into and chucks it at Ryan's head. <laughs> so on set, you know, it was like this little piece of hot glue that we had painted. And we had to like do so many takes of, uh, <laughs> Of, yeah, Matthew's chucking this rough, you know, little bullet straight into Ryan's face. And, and every single time he would throw it and it would hit Ryan really, and everyone would bust up laughing, you know. <laughs> so it was like take after take, just getting ruined. And the actors were doing great, you know, like they're keeping straight faces, but the whole crew would just bust up laughing. And so this, the, the, uh, 
boom operator, you know, and the sound mixer, they were getting kind of upset. They're like, come on, guys, just like one take. Please don't laugh. Be serious. Be, get serious. Be serious. Exactly. And so fine. And it was also we were trying to get the bullet to hit them, like just in the right spot, you know. And so finally we get one take. It hits them perfectly in the right spot. It's all great. And all of a sudden, the boom mic comes dipping <laughs> to the shot because oh, no. the boom operator had fallen over laughing. <laughs> so, yeah. That's that's awesome. That's awesome. Thanks for sharing. I always tend to ask those, those questions because I just I know people. You know, it means it, it it gives it a little bit more realism when you know we we tell this type of story. I I want to I tend to end you know and my questions with my intern with this specific question, but because I always want to, you know, give more context. Well, so I, you know, each of Amber, you first, what, what, you know, what do you, you want, what do you expect people to, to, you know, take out of it, take, take out of the movie once they see it? Well, I hope that people see it as, you know, um, not as like good versus evil mm -hmm. or anything like that, but like, uh, or that the government is bad or that the, or whatever questions people have, but that they see like that maybe we do have a little bit more control over these things. If we do our due diligence and, mm -hmm. you know, like uh, Khalil said, like, you know, your thoughts are your often your reality. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when they are doing the social experiment on us, like maybe we can, you know, pull back a little bit. I, I think it just has a bigger bigger question and then just you know mm -hmm. how are we going to live our lives are we going to be run by technology in these things and mm -hmm. um or are we going to take hold of our own lives and maybe you know log off every once in a while yeah we, we do gotta disconnect from tile time to time and just breathe some fresh air fresh air really live in the world that's yeah. tangible some you yeah. know things you can touch <laughs> yeah Kelly, do you do you want to expand on the question yeah, that's, I mean, there's a reason why the movie's called Listening, you know, they call it listening when they plug into each other's brains and mm -hmm. listen to each other's thoughts. But it's also a movie about communication and listening to, you know, the people around us, you know, your, your kid, your spouse, your friend, your coworker, you know, in, in a world where, yeah, I don't think technology is in and of itself bad, you know, but it tends to reflect the society that's there and so we need to be conscious of who we are as people and how to still remember how to you know communicate and especially now you know with, with this pandemic it's kind of crazy mm -hmm. we're communicating so much through technology mm -hmm. so we still have to learn how to have those human connections you know and uh yeah hopefully it's a movie that kind of sparks a conversation like you were saying you know to like explore these ideas and how, you know, what our relationship with technology uh, really should be. Yeah, I, to me, that's the thing that's gonna do, the, the thing that's gonna do is gonna spark a conversation because of everything. I mean, like I like just said, I mean, all the different piece puzzles of the piece, you know, that they're moving, that they're, that are, you know, that are, are part today of their, 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 their lives that, you know, reflect on the, on the story. So I, I, to me, it's going to spark a conversation. Again, I want to thank the two of you for your time and, and for the interview and, and congratulate the two of you on, on the movie. Awesome. I really liked it. And, and mostly because of the story, I'm, I'm really, I'm, I'm, I'm a sucker for, for this type of stuff when they, when we expose this, this, and obviously in an artistic way, but we expose those things that may be real or not. So I want to congratulate the two of you on, on, on an awesome job on, on, on the movie. Thank, Thank you. you. Thanks so much.